good day and welcome into this new world it is called the road less traveled if you've ever had the occasion to read a famous book of this name the road less traveled by a famous writer who unfortunately is no more his name was scott peck scott peck more than 30 years back wrote this uh, book with the title the road less traveled it was based as you would know on the famous poem by frost which said that i was walking along this jungle path and i came to an intersection where there were two roads one was a road which obviously by looking at it i could make out that everybody was walking on it and there was this other road which seemed to be less traveled there were hardly any travelers going on that and frost says in his poem i chose the road less traveled and I have walked on that path without any regret and with a lot of fulfillment. That is what this famous uh, counselor, therapist, Scott Peck used as his title. And he said, come on to this road less traveled. At a time and in an era, the 21st century, when the world seems to be hurtling at you know unmanageable speed towards technology, towards the best of luxuries, towards good lifestyles and all that. Somewhere deep down, if you're a sensitive person, you would ask yourself, what is my meaning of life? Where am I headed? What am I supposed to be doing? Am I really achieving what I wanted to do? Can I look back in my later years of life and say that, yes, I have done something worthwhile with my life? When these questions arise, a lot of people sit up and think, they look for answers. Some people may go into spirituality and find the answers uh, uh, there. Some people may get themselves totally involved in some sort of meaningful work or a hobby or a creative uh, activity and they may find some fulfillment there. Some people may sacrifice their life for somebody else. I'd like to live for my children or my grandchildren or for those orphans in the orphanage or something of that sort and they find something good to do there. But there's one area which I would like to talk about today. And that is the area where you say that I'm not going to start doing charitable acts. I'm not going to do social service. I am going to relate to human beings in such a way that every human being who comes to me, who interacts with me and who comes close to me gets touched at the heart. Not because I am a guru or a wise man who would tell him how to lead his life or something but just because I help him allow him that freedom to think for himself if that sounds interesting to you let me start off with telling you a story you know that uh, we are all fond of stories whatever age we are in we still love to hear stories now this is a real life uh, uh, story I did not have any formal education in counseling or therapies or uh, um, psychology or anything of that uh, um, sort. I am supposed to have studied engineering, got into some activities, etc. I had this uh, friend of mine, a classmate as well as a very good uh, friend of mine, who married another girl who was junior to us and whom I also knew. So this couple were very good friends of mine. They were living in a different uh, uh, city and whenever I would visit that city, I would go across and meet them, have a meal with them, etc. One day I was visiting that city and I called up and the wife picked up the phone and said, no, my husband is out of town and he's not likely to be back in the next two days, which is the time period I was to stay there. She said, but I would like to meet you. What is your program tomorrow? I said, I'm going to the bank. I have some work there in the bank's uh, head office. She said, oh, my college you know where I am doing some research work that's just next to the bank why don't we meet up in the library there I said fine so I went a little early I sat with her I just spoke to her for 10-15 minutes very casually about catching up with good old times and then as I was leaving I said how's your husband and how is he keeping and give him my regards she looked straight into my eyes and said you really want to know how is my husband I was a little shocked. I said, uh, yeah. She said, he's a scoundrel. I was shocked. 
I said, what's this happening? Is she joking? She said, no. That's a problem, you know. Everybody thinks he's a great guy. Everybody adores him. Only I, the wife, knows his inner side. And she started pouring out a lot of things about him. And here I was, literally shell-shocked, sitting and just staring at her with a blank expression, not knowing what to say. Because here she is talking about one of my really good friends and talking about things which I didn't even know whether I was to believe her or not. Anyway, the session went on and on and on and on for hours. I almost lost that whole day. I couldn't do my work, but I couldn't get up and go because she was perpetually crying, breaking down and going into her whole life history. She started telling me from her childhood days what her expectations were, from the time when she married him and what she expected and what he did and what he didn't do and all that. So this whole life story managed to take away the better part of a day of mine and I was still shell-shocked. I couldn't say anything to her except to look for a right occasion where she has not cried for a few minutes so that I can gracefully make my exit and run away from my death. After going back, I reflected and I said, this poor girl spoke to me for six hours. She told me so many things about her life and what is not going well in her life. And I had no solution to offer her. I couldn't utter one sentence of saying that, okay, maybe you do this or this may help or this may be good and all that. I'm supposed to be an elder and I'm supposed to be a trusted friend. How much she must have looked up to me for uh, advice. And here like a fool, I just uh, sat there staring at uh, her and walked off from there. Probably she's so angry with me that she'll never talk to me. Three days later, I get a call from her saying that I am so thankful to you, Ali. I am really, really thankful to you. My whole life has transformed. I have such a better relationship with my husband. I have made up this resolution and I am going to build up this and I am going to do this and I am going to do that. For a long time I thought that she is being sarcastic. Then it slowly sunk in that yes, what she is telling is the truth. I am supposed to have done something which made her think but I didn't know what it was. Years went past. One day I met a psychiatrist, a wonderful lady, very humane, and we were talking about emotional issues and things of that sort. And it suddenly struck me and I said, you know ma'am, this is what uh, happened to me so many years uh, back. And here I was, I made a fool of myself, I couldn't utter a word. She smiled at me and she said, Ali, you know what you did? You did exactly the right thing. You listened to her, you did not interrupt, you did not pass judgment. You did not give her any unnecessary advice. You did not counter with your own experiences. And that is the reason why she felt so nice. What she was carrying with her for the last six years, she managed to get it out of her heart in six hours. And now that she had a clean slate, having emptied out everything, she could start rewriting the script of her life, which is what she did. And she said, you know something? That's what makes a counselor. Can you believe that? Can you actually think that you can sit for six hours with a person going on talking about something and not say anything, not do anything and really things work? Yes, they do. This incident is more than 30 years old. I don't know how many times these incidents have repeated themselves, but I do know practically it does work. So now that you have taken this decision that yes, I want to do something, I want to be a counsellor. Let's for a moment even forget that uh, word. Let's say I want to be a human being who reaches out to other uh, human beings. I want to make relationships better. I want to see people with a smile on their uh, face. I want people to face challenges. I don't want to run away from somebody who is crying or who's had a setback in life or something. I'm going to be there to hold the hand of that uh, person. Now that you've done that, let us go into the practicalities of the uh, thing. Now, if you have already read up something on psychotherapies and counseling and all that, you will know that this whole story started with our famous Dr. Sigmund Freud, who came out with the first psychotherapy, which was called the uh, uh, psychoanalysis. Psych is the mind, analysis, analyzing the mind. He was one of the first among the modern uh, people in the area of mental health who gave to us this concept of how you analyze the mind. 
subsequent to that the entire 20th century saw a lot of therapies coming up all of them can be you know broadly put into a spectrum which ends on the one side called directive techniques and ends on the other side called non directive techniques directive techniques are as the word suggests where the therapist or the counselor tells a person what to do directs the person non directive is where the counselor or the therapist does not direct the person does not give advice does not give suggestions does not provide with solutions then what does he do if tomorrow you are a counselor and if somebody comes to you for help saying i am very upset about something or i am really confused about this or i want to take a decision about that and if you are to smile at him and say okay i am going to just listen to you i am not going to give you any advice i am not going to do any solution do you think he'll talk to you no obviously he'll walk off from there so don't tell your callers and counselees that i am not going to give advice i am not going to give solutions reassure the person and say yes i am there for you you said you want to talk to me i feel nice i feel privileged that you are willing to lay your trust in me remember never to look down at a person and think oh i am doing him a favor this poor guy who is in trouble has come to me no tell yourself and then tell the caller also that i feel privileged that you have selected me for sharing something which is so personal to you that's how the process begins now if you would like to know maybe my definition of uh, counseling in very very simple and uh, uncomplicated words no jargon i would say encouraging and motivating a person to share feelings that's the first part and empowering him or her to either resolve or cope with his issues let's take the first part encouraging and motivating a person to share feelings why do you need to do that because whenever a person has any issue whenever a person has something very deep down inside something very personal the person cannot share with anybody and everybody even when the person shares you will notice he does what is called as storytelling he just gives the facts i appeared for certain such exam and i got so many marks i passed in this subject and i failed in this subject etc or i was looking for this job and i got this job and then i had this problem with my boss and then i left this job and now i am applying for other jobs that is what we refer to as storytelling the emotions don't come out what we need to really do therapy therapy as uh, you may be aware is healing so when we say psychotherapy which is the technical word for counseling it is healing of the mind improving the mental health of that person facilitating in his process to have better mental uh, health so when we talk about uh, this encouraging and motivating a person your job as a counselor is going to be to encourage and motivate the person to share at the emotional level when the boss fired you how did you feel about it when you had to go back home and tell your family how did you feel about it today 15 days or 5 days have gone past how are you feeling about it tomorrow you have an interview in a new place and they are going to ask you what happened in your previous job how do you feel you are going to be able to cope with that question tomorrow that is what i mean by feelings or emotions so if you have to be a excellent or an effective counselor you have to encourage and motivate the person to start off with sharing feelings and how do you uh, do that you start off by being available available not just physically but mentally here's this person talking to me and i find a beautiful garden outside and i'm enjoying the view i'm not available to that person here's this person going on talking for quite some uh, time sharing something very deep and i suddenly look at my watch and say yes please go ahead he knows i'm not available there to him he's saying something uh, 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 to me maybe something that he has done wrong he says that uh, you know i had taken away some money from my office or i had uh, been very harsh with my wife or something of that sort and i just give him this expression oh you did that that's it i'm switching off the person he's not going to share feelings with me so we need to start with you know, having the proper uh, uh, availability to the person mentally and emotionally 
Only then the person will even make an attempt to talk to you. Now he starts talking. He says something like I, I just told you. Um, uh, I took away some money from my office. Or uh, the other day I just couldn't control myself and I slapped my wife. Can you be non-judgmental? Can you have developed that thing of acceptance? It's not as easy as you think. Because we are all tuned in, right from our childhood, we are tuned in to be judgmental. This category of people are like that. Those category of people are not to be trusted. Old people are like this. Young people are like this. People of the opposite sex are like this, etc. As long as you are very young, recollect. Didn't you go about saying, old people are very cranky. Very difficult to get along with them. They have outdated ideas. They don't respond to this thing. They go on repeating whatever they want to. Very difficult to get along with. Till one fine day, I look into the mirror and I realize I have become old. And that's when I turn around and say, these young people, you know, very difficult to get along with uh, uh, them. They are so cranky. They have their own ideas. They keep repeating only what they want. They don't listen to us experienced people. See how easily we switch over? That's what I mean by saying being non-judgmental or accepting the person as is and uh, where is. I am a man. I have never been a woman in my life. Can I understand not just the thinking and the actions but even the emotions of a woman, be it my wife, my daughter, my mother, my sister or an outsider? It takes a lot of acceptance. It takes a lot of unlearning of what we have already learned. That is to label people and categorize them. So that is one skill that you will be now learning step by step, step by step. But more than learning, by training, you need to learn by practicing. Ask yourself, make a list. Who are the people who, you know, I have a tendency to look down upon? Do I say, you know, these taxi drivers are all rude? Do I say policemen are all corrupt? Do I say old people are always very cranky? Do I say this children of rich fathers are always spoilt brats? If I have these habits, all of them, I need to start undoing. I need to say that every individual is different and unique. Once the person is convinced that yes, you are giving him availability and acceptance both, then the person talks. The person talks right from the bottom of his uh, heart. As a counsellor you will be amazed, I have been through innumerable of these experiences where the person says, I don't know what made me share this with you, I haven't shared it with anybody since so many years. I don't know, you know, suddenly how I came to confide this uh, in you. And that was because of these two skills that you had. And when the person starts talking, you have to listen. Easier said than done. Of course I listen, I have been listening all my life. No, you haven't. Many a time you have been hearing and not listening. There is a subtle difference between the two. You have to graduate from hearing what a person is saying on to listening what the person is saying. There again, there is passive listening and there is active listening. If you are an elder person and maybe a child or if you are a boss in an office and a subordinate comes to you and the person is talking, you know what you do without even realizing? You start checking out your phone messages, you start giving instructions to somebody, you take a file in front of you and turn the pages and you tell this person, yes, go ahead, tell me. Because you feel that you are a very important uh, person and what this person has to say is not very important. I'll just catch the gist of it. Now you have to bring about a change. As a counsellor, you have to do what is known as active listening. So even if you are doing something, you have to remove whatever that impediment is there. The phone may ring. Somebody else may come in with something. You may have some other work to do. Can you at that moment put everything away and say, I am going to be actively listening. Can I lean forward, make eye contact, have a nice soft expression on my uh, face and say, here I am with you, actively listening and totally concentrating on what you do. Take it one step further. You have to be a supportive listener. Here is this person saying, you know, I am suffering so badly because my son has become this, this, this and he is back answering to me and all that. You can listen and you can get tempted to say, 
Oh yes, adolescents are like that. Teenagers all rebel. You know when my son was 14 years old, da, 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 and it goes off, oh, finished. Your counseling is gone. You have to be there for that person and say, give what we call a supportive listening saying, yes, I understand that as a parent, you're very upset because your child is doing this, this, this. No other examples, no other anything. Just support that person and say yes. Don't even question, are you very strict with your child? Do you give him pocket money? Do you uh, try to discipline him? Again, you're not being supportive. So once you do the supportive listening, the person goes on talking. And when the person goes on talking, he expects from you what we call as empathy. Empathy is not sympathy. It is not compassion. It is not pity. Empathy, as the classic definition says, is putting yourself in the shoes of another person and understanding what is going on in his mind. What is he thinking? But let me extend that to tell you, you cannot put yourself in another person's shoes till you remove your own. That's where we fail. I'm wearing the shoes of a person who is 50, 60 years old. I'm wearing the shoes of being a male. I'm wearing the shoes of being an urban person. I'm wearing the shoes of being an educated person. I'm wearing the shoes of having been brought up in a family which was very loving and uh, caring. I'm wearing the shoes of a person who's got a very healthy bank account. Now, when I accost somebody who's wearing different shoes, can I put myself in his shoes and think what could be going on in his mind? If you can empathize, people love you for it. There are very, very few people left in this world who really, truly, genuinely empathize. And that is what brings me again back to the definition that I told you. The first half of the definition, encouraging and motivating a person to share feelings. If you have shown your total availability, if you have been non-judgmental, if you have been a good listener, and if you have felt genuinely and expressed your empathy to that person, you will be amazed how many people do not need counseling after that. They will say thank you. They may even say, it's been nice. I'll come back next week and meet up with you. And they may never turn up. You've done your job. In fact, you've done a better job because within that one you know, process, of catharsis as we call it emptying out you have empowered the person already that he doesn't want to even come back to you he moves on only in the case where the person says okay you've done a nice favor to me i'm thankful to you i feel lighter i feel better but i still have this issue to resolve not necessarily problem mind you issue i want some help uh, from you fine think over come back next week we will start going deeper. Now when we go deeper, what are we going to do? That's the second part of my definition. That is empowering him or her to either resolve his issues or to cope with it. The only way you can empower the person is to hold back and allow him to walk. Do you remember having taught a little baby how to walk? When the baby was taking his first, what we refer to as baby steps, he used to crawl on the ground. Today he feels, yeah, I can walk, so he gets up. He is holding on to something. He lets go and he takes those shaky steps. If you were to go and hold him and take him along, he will never, never learn how to walk. So while you may have helped him cover this distance from here to there, you have not done him a favor. You have done him a disfavor by making him dependent on your hands. If you say, here I am, in case you are falling, I will hold you down or I will be there with you. Come on, take the steps. He takes the steps. He falls. What does a good mother do? She lifts up the baby, you know, says, okay, don't worry, you've been hurt here. Oh, you've been hurt badly. He's crying. She goes and pats the ground and says, bad ground, hit you, caused you pain. I will see to it that the ground is punished. Come on, now stand up and start walking all over again. Mentally, that's what a counselor uh, does. You motivate the person. You empower the person to take his own decisions and to move on in his own uh, life. And for that, we have to be a non-directive counselor. We have to refrain from this temptation of giving advice all the uh, time. 
We have to refrain from this temptation that I am older, I am more educated, I am more senior, I am more experienced, I am more trained and therefore I can help this uh, uh, person. That itself is a skill in itself because most of us have rarely practiced uh, that. We have always been in what we call as the problem solving uh, mode. Once you've done that and you find that the person is getting a little empowered and he's moving on, the next step that you have to take is to now start withdrawing. On the one side, you reassure the person that you have found a permanent friend in me. Reassure the person that it's not a charitable act. I have found a friend in uh, you. We have a bond now. We know each other. We understand each other. And I will be there for you in case you need help. But now that you are feeling better, move on. Take your own journey. Go on to the road less traveled and succeed in whatever you are doing. So while you are assuring the person of your support and your long term backup, at the same time you need to learn the skill of weaning off. It's going to be a little difficult right in the beginning. Because the first time or second time or fifth time that you've counseled somebody and you've succeeded in helping him to think better and to become more independent or whatever it is, it's a feather in your cap, your collar goes up and you don't want to lose the guy. You want him to be hanging around somewhere so that you can say, hey, here's one person whom I've helped. So letting the person go and not come back to you, maybe he'll never come back to you because now he's been empowered, means you've done a wonderful job. And that is what takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of thinking, it takes a lot of introspection. I know some of these things are easier said than done. And that's the reason why you are here for this training. Otherwise there was no need at all. Because as I told you earlier, and I'm repeating again before I sign off, that there is a lot of unlearning that we need to do. The way we have been thinking, the way we have been programmed, we need to unlearn and then start the process of relearning, which is 20% of instruction from us, 80% is practice. The more you go on practicing, the more you will become an expert in these uh, things. And not only will you be helping so many other people, your own life will become better. Best of luck.